Hello folks, Triple T Cat here. I'm just making a quick KSP video. I mean, it might actually end up being kind of long because we're going to fly a few rockets. Uh, skip through it if you're only interested in seeing how the rockets fly, by all means. Uh, just to demonstrate some stuff, people on the KSP forums having a lot of trouble designing economical rockets to do their missions, having problems with the new aerodynamics. So, uh, as you can see, I do have some mods on this game, version of the game. However, I promise, I absolutely promise, the only mods I have installed are cosmetic and do not in any way affect the gameplay. You can see this is the newest version 1.0.2. So let's go ahead and load up our career save and demonstrate these rockets that that I have showed and people have asked how, well one guy asked, how do you even those rockets so small to do the things you say they do? Uh, I'll show you guys the difficulty setting, although the re-entry stuff is not a problem. Oh. So yeah, these are, as you can see, I have full re-entry heating and all that good stuff uh, as well. So that's not, I haven't like turned that down or anything like that. Let me just try and take a contract or something. Oh, we've already got one for a polar orbit of the moon. So I guess the first one I will show off is, uh, I'd actually probably use one of the slightly smaller ones for this generally, but I will use the one that I showed, wait, I, I, let me just check and make sure I don't need a goo, uh, a where is it? Let me just make sure I don't need a science bay. Okay, don't need a science bay, don't need a goo. But the one that I showed on the one that I posted a screenshot of was this one, the micro size G. Uh, yeah, so we'll just go over this rocket design real quick before I launch it. I I do have some custom parts, I suppose. It's not fully cosmetic. The only custom parts are these little these little surface mounted lights. They're, they're pretty much cosmetic. So in this service bay, wait, this is not this is not the one that I showed the screenshot of. This is the smaller version. We're gonna use the exact one that I posted a screenshot of though, just for the sake of completeness. If I can find it. Where is that thing? Here we go. This is the one I posted a screenshot of. So we have this bay here with a goo unit in it. You can take off this advanced reaction wheel. You don't really need it. There's a thermometer. The transmitter is up here. I've got all this stuff covered underneath this nose cone, so hopefully it's out of the airstream. I don't really know if that actually works, but I mean, the rocket works, as you're about to see. So let's go ahead and watch this thing. Um, the solid rocket boosters are thrust limited to I think 60, it might be 70% thrust. I should have checked when I was still in the VAB, but it is too late now. Uh, so for this launch, we're just gonna turn on SAS, kill our throttle, uh, and launch. So this is a pretty standard kind of launch. We're gonna start start turning the rocket over immediately. I just, I like to face these things towards the ocean when I'm in the VAB. I just rotate them in the VAB so that they're facing uh, the right way, as it were, but of course you don't have to do that. You'd probably want to orient the wings a little bit differently and stuff if it wasn't facing the... So that, anyway, that's all fine. Um, so yeah, we're just going to fly this thing in our typical kind of ascent path until these SRBs burn off, which is here. Oh dear, I fucked up my staging a little bit. It's okay though. And uh, light up this gimbal, this is the LVT-45 swivel, and start bringing our nose down just a little bit more now. Just a little bit more. Uh, we want to be going at a 45 degree angle at about the... 10,000 meter mark. So let's see, let's get this. Not a whole lot to talk about here, I'm afraid. Oops, I'm turning a little bit more aggressively than I want to, probably. But uh, that's okay, that's not going to be a major problem for us. Um, yeah, so not a whole lot to talk about here. This is just a kind of a standard launch. If if you are only just now starting to play with the new aerodynamics, you might be thinking, why didn't he fly up straight until 10k and then turn 45 degrees? Um, that's because you can't do that with the new aerodynamics. You gotta start turning sooner and turn more gradually. People, of course, who've been playing the new version or used to play with FAR will already be familiar with doing it this way, so it's not not hugely exciting, perhaps. Yeah, we turned this thing over a little bit more aggressively than we really wanted to, but it's not gonna be a big problem for us, so that is absolutely fine. Actually, we could, it's, it's okay now. You'll notice I'm keeping my uh, I'm just trying to sort of keep within, you know, being pretty close to the to the prograde marker in terms of the way that I'm pointing the rocket. Uh, 
trying to sort of pull the prograde marker, since I, like, I was keeping it above the prograde marker there because I felt like I turned over a little bit more aggressively than I really wanted to, but we're sort of back on track to where I'd like to be now, so I'll turn that back there. This is not, I don't have like a particularly precise ascent profile, I'm just kind of eyeballing this thing. I'm going to switch to this view now so I can see where our apopalopalos is. Well, this is pretty low, but uh, we're just going to keep, we're just going to keep flying. Yeah, this part is not super exciting, but uh, but it is happening. <sighs> Thrusting my rockets. Sorry, I won't, I won't start saying it's not very polite. Uh, so, I mean, I'm making this specifically because there was, uh, of like a forum thread where people are having problems, but hopefully this will be helpful to, you know, anyone who's maybe new to KSP or anything like that. This is a rocket design that will get you into pretty much whatever orbit you might need for like a satellite contract inside Kerbin's sphere of influence, including of course Minmus and the moon, etc, etc. Uh, i probably put one of these in interstellar space if I wanted to, but I don't. Anyway, we're going to push our Apopopolopolos up to about 100 kilometers, that's fine. I, I put that at different altitudes depending on how I'm feeling at the time, but in this case we'll just go for 100 kilometers. That's a, that's a fine low Kerbin orbit to go into. Uh, yeah, so you notice we don't actually have an enormous amount of fuel left on this thing, but uh, as you will soon see, it's going to be enough. It's going to be enough. Polar orbits, of course, a little bit tricky, a um, fair bit of fuel, but I've got one of these things, I'm not, I can't remember if it was exactly this one, but it was a very similar design if it wasn't exactly this one. Uh, I've got one of these in a orbit of the moon where like, I pushed it you know, past polar. It's, it's you know, sort of going the opposite direction to the way I entered the moon's SOI, so I mean, I'm, I'm pretty confident this won't be an issue getting into just a just a regular old polar orbit of the moon. Push ourselves up to our Apopopolopolos here, just coasting up here, not burning our engines or anything like that, because we don't need to kill our warp, and uh, just gonna burn prograde here until we circularize our orbit, or maybe a little bit up. I try and keep my Apopopolopolos sort of on or just in front of my ship, so I'll point the nose up a little bit if the Apopalopalos go <laughs> Apple Apis <laughs> I'll stop I'll stop saying it the weird way. Goes behind me or down a little bit if it's uh in front of me. Yeah. Anyway, so we are now in a roughly circular orbit of Kerbin. Um I could do this without maneuver nodes, but I'm not going to. There's no need for there's no need for it. I could just eyeball this. We're a little bit more eccentric than we want to be, although actually we happen to be, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, so we're going to want to burn maybe here, roughly, just to get ourselves some kind of moon encounter. doesn't even matter if it's a particularly good encounter, obviously, uh, well, let me just check what, what periapis we want. So I mean if we could get an encounter where we pass within, you know, 100 odd kilometers, that'd be ideal, but we don't really need to. Um, we won't be going very fast when we get to the moon, so we can always make adjustments once we get there. Well, let's just try and, like, that's a pretty high periapis. We want to bring that down a little bit if we can. So yeah, I'm just tweaking the maneuver node here, kind of eyeballing it. Of course, we're not, we're, yeah, we're pretty inclined, actually, so I think that's about as good as it's going to get. That's okay. Um, I could do a plane correction before I go to the moon, but I feel like... It's going to be better to just make my adjustments once I get there, since I am able to get an encounter. And we won't, we won't worry too much about... That's fine. Like, we could get... We could knock a couple hundred kilometers off that, but that's going to be fine. Um, the, fact that, the fact that we're going to be arriving at such a high inclination is actually fortuitous. Um, it's... Generally, you don't want to... Well, unless we're inclined the wrong way, of course. We'll see when we get there. Generally, you don't want to come up into orbit uh, far off being an equatorial orbit, but in this case, since we're going into a polar orbit of the moon anyway, it does kind of work for us. Just uh, speeding up time until we get around to our maneuver node. Oh, what a beautiful sunrise here in space. The final space. Could use the new feature to warp directly to maneuver nodes, but I'm kind of used to doing it this way. 
Although the new feature is nice. I'm going to start burning, just looking at the estimated burn time, I'm going to start burning about uh, 20 seconds before the node. So let's pull ourselves out of warp here. And we're just going to... You know, I could look at the uh, map while I do this, but we're just going to trust in our maneuver node not to lead us astray. And do this burn. Nice and... Uh, by the numbers, I guess. Move my mic a little bit closer. Ah, that's where we're going. I mean, that sort of lines up with conventional wisdom is if you're doing this without nav points, you sort of start burning when you see the moon coming over the horizon. Uh, in your orbit. Of course, we're doing this with, with maneuver nodes, so I don't need to try and eyeball it like that. Is that going to give us an encounter? Not quite. I need to speed up a little bit more. There we go. That's good. That's fine. We're going to we're gonna be coming in pretty far out from the moon, but that's fine. We got, uh, what, 75 units of fuel left. Now, that's not much, but... This thing's really small. The thrust to weight ratio on this, particularly as you start to get low on fuel, gets quite high. Um, so we can actually do a lot of work with only a little bit of fuel. Alrighty, fly around to the moon here. You can see we've already got a bunch of these. I've renamed all these things, but these are all pretty much the same design as this. Some of them will have goo canisters, some of them don't. I think one of them has a science bay on it. The materials bay is a little bit heavier than goo canisters, so that was a little bit tricky, but it's still actually pretty light. It's not a big deal. You can use something like this as long as it's not a super, super bizarro orbit. Yeah, so we happen to be coming in here with some of the work of the plane change already done for us which is fortunate, but we'd be okay even if that wasn't the case. And I mean, it does mean we have a very, very far, we're very, very far away from the moon, but that's okay. We're going nice and slow. So it's waiting until our periapis, flip around here. And what are, so we want to bring our, this down to about 100 kilometers. So we're just gonna burn here. I love burning. A little bit more. Uh, that'll do for now. We'll, we'll fix that up in a bit. So, let's see here. Alright, fly around to the Periapis, bring our Apopopolopolos down to approximately the correct height. Is this less than... What are we doing here? Oh, I should have left this a little bit further out because that's going to end up being our... Wait, which way are we... I just gotta focus up here for a second and make sure that I make the correct maneuvers since making the wrong maneuvers is gonna really ruin my day. <sighs> and we don't want that to happen while we're recording, although I'm not live streaming as I sometimes am, so if I fuck this up I can just, you know, stop the recording and try again, which is nice. But hopefully that won't happen to us. Okay, burn down until this thing is roughly circular-ish. So as you can see, we can change we can change this orbit really super quick now because this thing's thrust weight ratio is getting really high. So we've used up about 25 units of our 75 remaining there. Which way are we going and which way do we need to be going? Let's fly around to the node here. Wait until the node, we're at the node and then I'll start trying to make this plane correction. We need to burn either normal or anti-normal, I'm not sure which. Let's find out. Uh, whichever one that is. Triangle with not the things sticking out of it is the way we want to burn, so that's right here. Okay, wait until we're right on top of that node. There we go, and just start doing this. Now, when you're doing this, make sure you track the sort of pink thing on the nav ball. I don't do this with maneuvers because you end up pushing the opposite side of your orbit way out of whack if you don't actually track this pink thing, and the maneuver node will not do that. Um, we're getting pretty close to being on the right orbit now. I'm going to wait until we get around to the ascending node to do the rest of the correction. And of course, when we get to the ascending node, we will need the opposite thingy. I think this is normal and the other one is anti-normal, but it's possible I've got that completely backwards. I don't actually know that much about orbital mechanics, just, just what I learned from KSP, and I guess what I need to know to fly these relatively simple missions. Here we are at the ascending node. Let's flip our craft around. We have plenty of electric charge and stuff, right? Yeah, of course we do. 
Alrighty. And finish up this burn. Okay, that's all correct. And now we just need to get our apsises lining up in the right place. I think what we're gonna wanna do to fix that is burn. Oh, apparently that was close enough. However, as you can see, we still have 31 liquid fuel left, so we could have made quite a bit more adjustment to this orbit. I mean, you look at, you saw how fast I was able to sort of do the plane change. That only cost, what, 20 units of fuel? So if I wanted to adjust this to make it closer, we'd have enough. Um, this thing is going back set. This is going the opposite direction, so I pushed this thing's plane way up over being polar and then back the other way, so like if I switch to this. I'm not gonna fly the other craft that I showed on the forum in this video just to stop this video from becoming super long. Um, I may show them in later videos or if, if people really want, but to keep this one video from being too long, I will not uh, include those being flown, but I will show you, so yeah, this is the exact same thing, but this is, has less fuel left because it was a more eccentric orbit. But I will show you, I've got, um, just to prove that I can put those things up there, well, more or less prove anyway, I've got the upper stage of that Moonlander rocket I showed. I've got one of those landed on Minmus, so I will just show you, uh, I, I um, actually, that one, that one I was not able to recover, uh, because, I don't know, well, there's one that I wasn't able to recover, Merle's regret. I wasn't able to recover it because I accidentally blew the engines off when I landed, not because of any Delta V problems. Um, but here we go, this is where Valentina is landed on Minmus, on the, uh, and this thing has plenty of fuel to return. This thing actually is more than enough fuel to get back from Minmus. So this is the upper stage, I mean, if you look at the picture I posted on the forum thread, if you're one of the people from the forum thread, you'll recognize this as being, uh, the upper stage. Like, it's slightly modified, this is from the new version. But I, I assure you, the launcher, there's actually less fuel on the launcher than there was in that screenshot because I found it was uh, more efficient if I carried a little bit less mass. Anyway, so there's that. The gray disc I have not tested in 1.0.2, so I'm not 100% sure that can still do a moon or flyby. But what you'll notice about the gray disc is its construction very, very similar to the unmanned thing that I just showed you uh, going to an eccentric moon orbit with enough fuel left to return to Kerbin if I wanted it to. So it's not, it's probably, I would hope anyway, having seen that, not a stretch of the imagination at this point to believe that this can return from the moon, because, uh, you know, it's very, very similar to the thing that I just put up, which was this. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a very, very similar rocket design. This is, uh, I think, a little bit heavier, actually, because it's got, oh no, this would be a little bit lighter, but nonetheless, they're, they're pretty similar. Uh, anyway, that's the video, guys. I hope this showed you some things that will help you on your KSP journey. Until next time, Trouble T Cat out.